Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Previously you might have seen that we've been doing quite a few videos on the Cerberus for doing Dark Abyss. I think this ship is an amazing ship for doing the Dark Abyss. Something I would like to test here is uh, to do a T5 Cerberus run. I have previously done this but I want to do more training, more experiments here because I think that you can sometimes encounter difficult waves and maybe just parting wrong can also cause a big difference between life and death. Uh, I've mentioned this quite a few times in the previous T4 runs I've been doing. It's that I lost the Cerberus for T4s. This current fit is for T4s. But actually, it was in T5 that I lost it. Because I made a slight adjustment, which we're going to do here, in the f for the T5s then. And I lost it. And there was a reason for that. It was because we had a very, very annoying Cinnabar wave. And those things can be quite annoying. They do a lot of damage, a lot of EM damage, which we're not too resistant against. However, I did make a critical mistake there in the video when I was re-watching it. And that was that I went and fought them in the orange cloud, the filament cloud. That makes it that my shield booster consumes quite a bit more capacitor. Uh, we're using a Pithex type large shield booster and that is a very power hungry module. So this is just going to drain our capacitor instantly. We were actually able to tank them as far as I could tell. Uh, so. It was a little bit unfortunate, but it's just the way it was. Uh, an alternative, if we would like to really have more capacitor, uh, we could actually go with the Gistex type large shield booster and put some uh, high-grade crystal implants. That would be a very good idea, in my opinion, to have very good capacitor stability. You could even possibly have uh, the just the Pithex type large shield booster and have high-grade crystal implants. Then you can maybe pulse the shield booster a bit. Though the Gistex type is quite a bit more cap efficient than the Pithex type large shield booster. But I'll be giving it a go because I'm going to be going pretty like light. This fit can be blinked quite to a, quite a big degree. But uh, I want to try doing it light on the bling because I want to see if it's possible to still do these pretty smoothly. But if I just take into consideration our piloting, we make sure our piloting is on point, then I think in my opinion i think they would be able to do them and then maybe we can perhaps bling a few modules here and there put some high grade crystal implants or something in so that possibly we can do this a little bit more sort of like safe uh, but in the meantime i was thinking of doing it like we're doing now uh, we're going to get another hornet too put this in here and i would like to put some basic implants in i want to put some basic implants in. we'll put the heavy assault missiles uh, implants well, is it O3? Oh, O3, oh, oh, there, good. I didn't know it was that expensive. O3, oh, and then rapid launch. O3 oh, is so always good time. They're not too cheap implants, actually. They're quite expensive here. Uh, target na navigation prediction. This is a good implant. Why are all the implants so expensive? Have they gone up in price? I live in Sweden, and here. The food prices have been going up quite a bit due to inflation. It seems like there's been a case of the inflation here in uh, EVE Online as well. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now we can take the heavy assault missiles. And then we'll also go target navigation prediction. And then we'll go with the rapid launch. So we get a tiny bit extra DPS. Good. And then what we will also do here is get the synth boosters. We'll put synth blue, synth crash, and then we will also do the agency hard shell. Agency hard shell is actually a pretty good booster. It gives us, uh, for a very low cost, extra shield boosting capabilities. So put that in there. Good. I'm curious, what's the price of these Pyrolancias? What do they do? They make 3%, so it's not that much extra DPS. Otherwise, I mean, it's something we could do. What would it be here? It would be about like 20 something extra DPS. So not so much for 4 million. But these boosters, we can use them. Uh, so, oh, we forgot to do something. We need to empty our cargo here. Get this, and then Abyssal Loot, and then we'll save that Chaotic Dark that we've got here from the sites we previously run. This is actually the loot from only two sites, so a really big amount of ISK we were able to acquire here from just two T4 Darks. We got very lucky on the filament drops, though. We got very good uh, T6 exotic film. Oh, no. Ugh, I'm so stupid. I silly and did the uh, sold them to the, like, the limited uh, time order you see that two weeks 
Ah, we'll just leave them there and wait until they eventually sell. It's going to cost so much in the broker fees and everything, I think, to remove them. So let's just find a system quickly. And look if we can do the T5. Move Lylan. Nearby in Malrasi. Move Lylan is not really a good place to do the T5s just because it's got not 0 0.6. We need to find near 0 0.6 security to do the t5 dark so that having problems with or high risks of having the gankers there already is a high risk just you doing t5s close to Jita, but even more if we go into a system that has uh, the restriction because it'll make us that we go wanted when we go out then even non-ganking people or non-suicide ganking people can attack us otherwise if we go in a 0 0.6 system then only suicide gankers are only able to attack us oh this Cerberus Cerberus really cool ship You know, I really want to try out also some low tier day one stuff because it was a long time since I did the uh, the day one alpha stuff. I think that stuff, a lot of you guys liked it and I also thought it was quite fun uh, sort of being tactical and advanced, so to say, like, you know, think, figuring out fits, but for a very low uh, set or with very low requirements, you could say, like having a very limited skill set and limited budget. I thought that the challenge was actually pretty fun. I've got some ideas, but we'll see, we'll see. When is the Kestrel I want to test out, see if we can get it to grind through them smoothly. I think a Kestrel would not be a bad idea for T0 Ducks, because if you're able to use, like, say, a Rocket Kestrel, it will then be able to translate very nicely over to a Rocket Hawk. And a Hawk is very nice, in my opinion, to do T1s and even T2s. Uh, so... I think you could have a very good time going with that kind of a skill set there. We're going a little bit all over the place here. Van Callen is a good 0 0.6 system that's close to Jita. Just need to keep an eye here on the local because I didn't actually get ganked there once. Anything here? We've got one red guy here in the system. Otherwise nothing particular. Are there any other 0 0.6 systems? Yeah, there are quite a few other 0 0.6 systems here. In fact, this system here of Itamo seems to be almost like a hub for encountering the 0 0.6 systems. Let's go. Cerberus going in. So the implants are not too cheap, actually. They are quite a bit expensive. But our boosters can be very useful. This will increase 6% and this, I think, 3%. Yes, yeah, so it's almost a 10% increase. So that'll be about... I will have almost uh, 170 something HP a second. Abyssal launch site, there's hardly anyone here, that's good. Chaotic Dark, let's go. I also need to find the T4 Cinnabar rooms, which I haven't found yet, but if we can handle the T5 Cinnabar rooms, then it shouldn't be any issue whatsoever. Okay, there's extraction nodes, but I'm going to focus purely on just trying to get through this wave uh, smoothly. We've got the dissipators here. Confuse can also be problematic and there's an entangler as well. So we'll just try to go take this, uh, take it easy here and go through them and try to also end up near Charybdis. Now we do not want to go into that blue cloud because that's going to cause, uh, that orange cloud, that guy is going to cause problems. So we'll just be a little bit careful here, go through them straight away. Going to get a lot of incoming DPS. I think it's alright. Where they've got the entangler. No, he's not attacking me anymore, I think. Charybdis is over there, so if we just keep a little bit of an angle here, I think it should be okay. Keep velocity up, please. We need to keep that velocity up. Important, very important. Makes us avoid damage, and I think it actually even makes us apply slightly better. We're just webbing them so they can't get close to us as well. The more of these confusers we destroy, the quicker we'll destroy every other one but then you can also think that okay every tang entangler will destroy the closest the fastest can get us to get close or the less amount of dps we'll be taking so i think it's a big question whether whether or not we're able to tank if we're not able to tank well then possibly it could be good to go for the entangler first it's just especially only one it'll make quite a big difference to our max velocity by taking them out And go for that by adaptive here. We can go a little bit to the side. Don't need to continuously use the booster if we don't take much damage. 
good. We've got so many confusers, that's annoying. Make everything so much worse in terms of uh, uh, the application. Oh, we've got some misc and that was from those orders that I did by mistake. <laughs> See if we can land one quick volley here on that uh, on that buy adaptive cash. Go in here. Now this was a dumb idea. You see that I've got this filament cloud that's going to make my shield booster use so much shield. This but, oh, not shields, but use so much capacitor. But it's, it's currently, I feel very comfortable, so I'm gonna go in it anyway. Oh, 27 million, nice. We got another chaotic dark as well, in case we want to run more. Are these filaments expensive? Forgot how much they cost. Yeah, Nine million. They cost. They're somewhat costly, but they're still cheap when compared to exotics and electricals. But they did actually go for a lot less before. Uh, they, uh, I think they went for just like a couple of million. Great, take this confuser out. Good. Oh, we need to use that shield booster. And get the spearfish to take it out here. And we'll just make sure we reload soon. We can go over to rage. I think it's a good idea that we do that. And we'll also go past Charybdis here. It's already reload to rage. Now we can get the drones even helping us a tiny bit here on Caribbis. Not like it's going to do much, but it'll be something. A little extra on the side, you know. Get those rage missiles going. They're not going to do much damage to Fialtz, unfortunately, just because of the bad application of rage heavy assaults, but it's alright. It will still get through him just a little bit slower than the Kaldari Navy. Sometimes it can do more if you get a good angle on him, or Fialtz suddenly decides to slow down. But usually it's not that good. Not a good time you've got here. It's also a lot worse when I'm not webbing as well. Okay, let's approach Charybdis Tyrannus. And we'll push Charybdis Tyrannus towards the Origin Conduit. It helps a little bit with the completion time of this uh, room. So we don't have to travel as much when we go on the way back. So if we go a little bit here, try, try to catch up with Charybdis. Charybdis is pretty fast for a battleship, actually. And uh, it is amplified even more in the dark sides where you got that velocity bonus. So we go a little bit here. We can web curb this just one cycle just so we can catch curb this. Good. Now we go here. And basically no damage at all is being taken unless they get some lucky shot because of the reduced optimal range of curb this and also our increased speed as well helps quite a bit. Okay, so where is the gate? The gate is over there. So we go a little bit to the side. And then we bump this guy. Good. Bump Charybdis. So that we can get a little bit closer here. Now we'll just get approach it. Because Charybdis' AI is always to keep range from us. So if we just stay here, then Charybdis is naturally going to go towards the gate. If we can sort of keep Charybdis in the angle that we want. We need to just be slightly below because it always tries to just keep it distance. It's always going directly away from us. Great, okay. Let's go to that transfer conduit. Next room, we'll go for Kaldari Navy here. That room did take quite a bit of time actually. Five and a half minutes, maybe even more because it'll take a bit of time to get to that, uh, to the transfer conduit, but it's okay. It's okay. The Ephialtis cruisers that are associated with uh, Charybdis they usually do take a bit more time to destroy than when you compare it to Scylla rooms with the Scylla Tyrannus who this time or oh, a little bit over six minutes even not good need to get quicker 1k a second able to go exactly 1k a second that's pretty fast we're in the dark side so that's also a main reason we're going fast but it just feels cool to be able to go over 1k a second in a cruiser especially with afterburn as well but that's annoying there I would have wanted to take out curb this a bit quicker you could increase the DPS by going with the bling damage modules but I preferably want to avoid it if I can to save on the cost if you were farming this a lot then it would be a different situation Oh, here's a good idea to go with the Mjolnir Rage, because we've got the Rogue Drone Overmind. 
So we're just going to go straight in and go for the EM because the EM is good to start off with the Rogue Drone Overmind because it will it has EM very low EM in the shields. So then we just web the Overmind and it's all right. There we go. Now I can boost up a little bit as well in our shields. Just need to keep a little bit of an eye on our drones that they don't get wrecked. Okay, now I'll go with the Scourge Rage. The reason why I want to use EM is look at the difference here. 21% versus 53% in the EM. A very big difference there. I mean, the time when you factor in the time to reload, maybe it's not a little bit worse to use only Scourge, but I feel like it is better to go with the EM. And especially more worth it when you're going in a Hawk, because a Hawk has... Uh, takes a lot longer to destroy this so the amount of time the reload plays into effect in uh, uh, completing this room is a lot less like the proportion of time required to reload is a lot less compared to the full room time we're able to destroy him really quickly this guy seems like it's going pretty good and we'll have the drones go for the wide active cache there and here also we want to try to angle the rogue drone overmind. It'll be good that we angle the rogue drone overmind. So that the rogue drone overmind is in the place we want it to be. It's a little bit difficult when it's webbing us, but we're also webbing him. So he's also going pretty slowly. I wonder if it's possible that we can have some of our drones take out these uh some of these uh, frigates here. But I worry that they're going to be taken out because maybe the drones are gonna go crazy, the rogue drones are gonna go crazy on them. Uh, let's see now, no aggro so far. Good to use our shield boosting, I think, a little bit. To save just a little bit of capacitor. A little bit to the side we can go. Possibly we can even go towards the bite out of cash now, actually. The Rogue Drone Overmind doesn't have so much more HP. What resist profile does it have? It's pretty, yeah, Kinetic is the best here. He's got pretty high resist, this guy. Pretty tanky boy. Hmm, those rogue drones, they went idle for a second because th that guy, I think, is going too f too fast, so he's not able to catch them properly. Sometimes when the NPCs are going too fast, the, dro the drones you've got are like, oh, I just give up. Hopefully you don't go out of range of this guy here. 29 kilometer range, you need to get a little bit closer now. And use a bit of shield boosting as well. Always good to have that shield boosting. Look, you see that drone gave up and started going for this one and said, Come on now, take out that rogue drone overmind. Ah, oh, we still have to stop shooting in the very end. We'll just make sure that we switch over to the Kaldara Navy. Nah, we weren't able to in that reload cycle. It's unfortunate. Oh, come on now. He's getting just out of range of our rogue... Oh, just out of range of our miss. That's annoying. There we go, good. Now we take out these guys properly. Podcasters and everyone else. And not much application at all here. See if we move a little bit, it can help a little bit. They'll go in and out of their MWD cycles. I think that's how it works. We go for these guys here. Keep in mind, we're not using any boosters. We could use the crash booster to get a little bit extra application, but I'm just chilling here. Okay, now for this one. How much time has gone? Eight minutes left. Just speed up a little here. Get a little bit closer to this transfer conduit. Time, surprisingly, is a bit of an issue here. I think it's a lot to do with the application and maybe our bad positioning as well. Could also be that our application is not good enough. Possibly if we had killed our navy, we would have destroyed these guys a lot quicker. It's just annoying having to reload all the time, you know. And now this guy is going to be completely still, I think, because no more NPCs left, so he's just died really quickly. Kaldari navy, drones in, next room. What kind of wave do we have now? We don't need to use those shields to save the save the capacitor. Very important in case you have you have problems here. So this is a hostile wave because it's kicking more as they can do quite a bit of damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this orange cloud immediately because this is going to cause big problems if I if they catch me in it. I want to take out the kicking more as fast. Hopefully the dark side is going to aid us into avoiding the majority of the damage. What is our range on the 41, we can start attacking them already. Let's go. They've already got attacking on Cloud as well, which is helping them a bit too. 
tachyon clouds all over the place. Then we've got a blue cloud as well. Bit annoying. Let's go a little bit out of these guys' range. Try to avoid as much as we can. Can we use the web? Not yet. Sort of cruise by them and use the web a little bit intermittently. There's a ghost already who I can actually web. Go for this guy here. Good that we get that web on. We seem to be doing quite a bit of damage with the web now. Oh yeah, we're doing quite a bit of damage. Nice. Let's go for this bite out of cash here. Great, come on now. Destroy that Kikimura. Great, now for this one here. I wonder if they'll be able to take out our Hornets since they'll have so bad tracking here in the dark sites. Okay, we've got something. Not too much in that uh, the th last uh, buy adaptive. See, what was our total loot here? Abyssal loot, 50 million. So not so much. We could get a bit more, actually, if we were to go with the uh, the extraction nodes quite a bit more. They contain a ton of loot. Could even try going for them, actually. Because we have a bit of time to spare here. See if we have the range required because we've got quite a bit of ghosting going on. We need to take out all those ghosters. So it's like it's a bit counterintuitive because like the closer we get, the easier it is for us to use web, which improves our tracking. But also, the closer we get, the more effective their tracking disruptor is as well. So it's a bit annoying. Got the, you've got like plus one, then minus one, then you've got nothing left. Oh, that's annoying. There, you can't even. Oh, that guy is getting out of range. He's got so much remote reps as well. Crazy what kind of remote reps you've got. Let's get out of this tacky on cloud. It's really annoying here. The amount of oh, the amount of remote reps they're getting and everything is so hard to apply to anything here. Let's so get out of range because this tacky on cloud makes no applying nothing. The time is also not good as well. Four minutes left. We've barely taken out anyone actually. And the, you know this could actually be deadly here if we don't be careful here. We could actually die if, if we're not careful. Come on now, just destroy them. Get that, get that web on the way, please. I want to actually take out those Dracovacs because I think they're providing really big remote reps to these guys. Let's take them out. I'm using Kaldari Navy now. Probably I should be using the Rage to be honest. I think it's okay. Oh, that's very small volleys we are giving this Dracovac here. Come on now, take him out. Can we web him? No, we can't. I think just taking out this Dracovac is going to make everything be a little bit easier. Oh, this, uh, I'm going to switch over to Rage because this is going to be too slow with the Kaldari Navy. Rage, let's go. Come on, take him out now. 800 volley, nice. Almost 900 volley. That's good. Getting some big hits now. Oh, that time is very slim here. I think that there's a risk actually we could not make it here. I just need to be as on point as possible. Over here a little bit. You can always overheat a little bit, just that little extra, you know. And we can also overheat the web if we need to. Just to get that extra range. Two minutes left. What kind of range are we talking about here? 27 kilometers. I don't need to overheat so much. This ghost is causing problems, I think, as well with us. Let's try taking him out. Scrub. 1k volley. Oof, that's nice. No mercy. Half his armor just gone. Take him out. Good. Now, next for this one. Oh, I really underestimated the time here. Even though we've got 800 DPS, it's not being applied too well. Ooh, one minute left. Need to overheat a little bit more. And we also need to make sure that we come close to the... The... The transfer conduit or the origin conduit. Oof. Come on now, get close to the origin conduit. Don't overheat so much, please. Thank you. Come on now. How much time is there? 40 seconds. We can maybe do it if we get some good hits here. I hope just attacking on the cloud doesn't ruin it all. And 
And let's use that crash booster. A little extra application here. Oh no, please don't go in the tachyon cloud. No, don't go in the tachyon cloud, please. 10 seconds. Good. Get that. Get that. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. Get in there. Get in there, Cerberus. Four seconds. Four seconds. Come on. Please. No. Oh, that was so close. I just flinged out a little bit. That was an epic fail there. A really proper epic fail. Well, what did we learn here? Well, something I learned here is that we definitely could have tried avoiding uh, getting the true larvae in these tachyon clans. I felt like that ruined our application a lot. Second of all, in the first room, that, something that consumed a ton of time was that uh, we had the Charybdis Tyrannos taking so much time for us to get to the end uh, gate. So what we could have done is perhaps get closer to Charybdis initially, because we were anyway not taking any damage, so it would not be any problem that we just sort of circle Charybdis, but oh, that is really annoying. I'm really surprised that it took such a long amount of time, actually. I didn't really think it was at all going to be a problem in terms of time. I was always thinking, oh, our tank is going to be a problem, but you see there that there was actually quite a bit of problem getting the ship to be able to do them properly, even with a bit of implants here and there. Oh, we were so close. It was like a couple of seconds extra and that would have been enough. It's just the way it is sometimes. It's just the way it is. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from that. I did at least. We'll try next time. See if we can do any better with the Cerberus in the Abyss. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.